<laughs> Liverpool somehow again managed to get another win to put themselves 25 points of Mr. Breach FFP Manchester City. It's your boy Ojo Aisame back again with another post match analysis and player review of Liverpool beating Norwich 1 0. So let's get things started off with. Obviously, the lineup Liverpool with a little, a few changes to the last lineup. It was um, Fabinho would, wasn't starting. Neither was Sadio Mane, who was obviously in contention to start as he came back in full training. And um, yeah, I think probably he's going to be. Um, you know, he was rested a little bit for the um, for Atletico Madrid match, which is obviously this week on Tuesday, I believe. And uh, yeah, so we had. In goal, Alisson, Trent, Joe Gomez, Virgil van Dijk, Andy Robertson, which is the norm right now. Um, and then we had um, Henderson, Junior Wijnaldum, Naby Keita starting, coming back from injury and finally starting. It was very nice to see. And then Salah, Ox out wide on the left and um, Firmino in his normal role. Um, opinions on the lineups to be fair, the only one I was really worried about was um, Oxlade Chamberlain. I felt that I've always said that um, him out wide, I don't think it's his position. I think he's obviously much better in the middle of the park. And um, maybe it would have been better if he actually started Divock Origi today instead. I'm not too sure. But I just don't think out wide he's as, um, he's as good, even though Divock Origi is exactly the same. We could have maybe started Minamino, but again, our left wing position is very vacant, and obviously Sadio Mane is just coming back from injury. So I don't know. I don't know whether Oxley was the best choice, but I kind of had a feeling. My personal opinion is that normally whenever he plays out wide, he doesn't really play too well, then manages to get a goal. But obviously, it wasn't meant to be today. Um, but apart from that, it was a bit surprising not to see Minamino in the starting in on the bench or anything. That was a bit weird. But apart from that, I thought the lineup was quite strong, and we obviously, if anything went wrong, we had Sadio Mane, Fabinho, and the other guys um, to also come in. So the game started, and there was not really much to talk about. If I'm being completely honest, we had a lot of possession, a lot of you know, a few corners. You know, we started off Trent with a shot from outside the box, which went wide, um, and then that was literally like 15 seconds in, and then later Ronald like, say Chamberlain had our only shot on target of the half, which was a Good interplay down the right hand side, but it was a really tame shot. If I'm being completely honest with you, um, and then yeah, um, there wasn't really that many chances. There was a few corners here and there, but nothing that was made off it. I mean, Norwich, a team which is used like I've been criticised for being so open and you know expansive, you know bit over expansive at times. Um, today, sharp tried showing up shop, and they did a good job in that, and they exploited Liverpool quite well. They created the best chance of the first half and literally the only chance of the first half, which was a brilliant over-the-top uh, through ball from um, McLean. Plays it into... Um, I can't remember his name now. Um, Rupert, something like that. Uh, plays it into him. And then he... To be fair, I don't think he does much wrong, the um, Norwich attacker. He plays it over into uh, Pukki who was in space after he runs past Joe Gomez and Joe Gomez loses him and then plays it, I think he was onside as well, plays it into Puki and Alisson with the hands of God, he is, he is not a human being, he is beyond that, he is extraterrestrial, I don't know, but he brings out the strongest palm out possible and gets out of danger and it was stopped the best chance of the game. Uh, well, of that half anyway, and brilliant stuff there from Alisson, definitely keeps us in the game. I thought it was a sure goal, but I forgot that Alisson Becker was in goal. But apart from that, I thought it was a very like last the first half. It's probably one of our fir worst uh, first half performances this season, I'd probably say. Um, you guys may disagree with me, there might have been another one, but it's definitely been, and I was a bit worried because obviously... I was going on that winter break and it's happened a lot of times when we've gone out to Marbella in Spain and all of that afterwards. The team doesn't look at its best. And I know there's a break and stuff, but it felt like the players were still on holiday. 
And, uh, you know, there was times when Trent was given a ball away recklessly. He wasn't, Andy Robertson wasn't providing that much in the attack. Same with Trent. Genie Van Alden was ghosting. You know, there wasn't too much. Navigator wasn't getting much of the ball. Henderson was doing wayward passes and stupid things. There was a chance which luckily gets defended quite well towards the end. I think Navigator does get uh, tackles him. Um, but there was a stupid pass from um, Jordan Henderson. There was just a lot of mistakes Salah was doing. You know, he was into playing, but then sometimes he wasn't doing that much. I thought in that first half, personally, Bailas and Becker, Firmino was our best player. He was providing the source. He was doing all the right things. And, you know, it was just a shame that there was not really enough chances that were created. But then we go into the second half, and I think from the off, we were much better. We were obviously on the front foot a bit more, and we were, I thought, much better. We obviously had the great chance with... Um, Mohamed Salah and Naby Keita, the ball's on the right-hand side. Salah does very well to get onto his right foot, tries to pull it across goal. Tim Krul makes a brilliant save, and then Naby Keita takes a shot, and Lord knows how that didn't go in. I, I don't know whether it's a poor finish from Naby Keita or a brilliant save from Tim Krul, because it was a brilliant reaction save. You know, for The fact that Tim Krul managed to get up and save it was amazing, so... I don't know about it, but yeah, apart from that, there, there was a few chances here and there. There was obviously the cross from Andy Robertson and a penalty shout, in my opinion. This was, it was a corner on the left-hand side, I believe. Trent um, crosses it in and smart from Norwich, but I do feel like um, Van Dijk should have been given a penalty. You guys may disagree with me if you guys are Liverpool fans or not. You guys may disagree with me, but I thought his hands were, you know, there was literally two Norwich players who were manhandling. Virgil van Dijk. So personally, I thought that was a penalty, but what do I know? Um, but there wasn't really that many. There was a few chances later on, but there wasn't many. There, were, You know, Naby Keita had a shot from outside the box, which went straight at Tim Crow and got parried out for a corner. But there wasn't much. But one thing I would say was that once the substitutions were made, which was Mane coming off for um, Oxley chamberlain and um, Genie Wijnaldum coming off for Fabinho, we looked much more better. And we kept on knocking on the door. You know, um, there was one chance where I thought Salah could have done much better and actually laid it off into Sadio Mane because he was in much better position. Or if he was, he was kind of like he was stuck in between two minds and he ends up messing up the chance. Um, there was a, I think it was after Firmino dispossesses um, the Norwich defenders and there was so much time and space for Mohamed Salah. Um, and then, yeah, there was there was a few chances we got in behind a few times. You know, there was one where Sadio Mane plays a brilliant ball into Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah tries to cut it back and it gets cleared away. There was just, it was the momentum and all of that. We seemed so much better as soon as um, Sadio Mane and Fabinho came in. You know, Fabinho defensively was breaking up the play, stringing the balls out wide into Sadio Mane, into Trent. There was, there was just so much, it was so much better, so much fluid. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to see Fabinho back in his form. And obviously, it's, he's been like that for a while. And obviously, Sadio Mane doing what he did. And then, we'll get into the goal. I mean, there was a few chances before. Teddy hitting the post as well. I, how could I forget that? Um, yeah, and as I said, Norwich did have a few chances to actually get a goal. But in the 77th minute, uh, it was actually really interesting. Um, it was, I thought, the ball gets played, you know, Norwich cleared the ball out and... Van Dijk's on one side, Joe Gomez, the ball goes towards Joe Gomez. I thought Joe Gomez was going to play the ball into um, into Van Dijk, but he does very, he asserted the Norwich attacker, and he manages to just go outside, for the defender, plays it into Henderson, and then Henderson moving like a quarterback. He's doing his quarterback role, kind of, dare I say it, but similar to what Gerald was doing in 13-14. Doing, a, you know, not as good, and as aesthetically pleasing, but in a similar in a similar fashion, pings the ball into the path of Sadio Mane, and the sheer audacity of what Sadio Mane did, and Firmino tried doing it in the first half, and Sally didn't work out for him, but this time it worked. Sadio Mane on his right foot controls it, karate kick style, karate kid style, on his right foot controls it, swerves. Makes the ball go onto his left foot and hits it into the near post. Brilliant finish to make it 1 0. And the relief, I mean, fun stat for you guys. It was actually the longest time that Liverpool have gone 0 0 this season in the Premier League, anyway. I think maybe the Napoli game, if I'm not mistaken. But in the Premier League, for sure, that is the longest Liverpool have been stayed 0 0 for the whole game. And, um,. 
yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a mad one if I'm being completely honest with you. And what a finish. And then again, there was the game did seem to open up though much more. There was a few chances that Norwich had in behind. They had a lot of space, but then there was a brilliant chance for Roberto Firmino, which I don't really think it was a bad miss. To be fair, Trent Alexander-Arnold puts in a brilliant cross, but with a little bit too much fizz. It was a very good cross pinpoint, but it was just a bit too hard for Firmino to actually redirect it and put it in. And he ends up hitting it over. I'm pretty sure people on Twitter are going to be like, oh, he, you know, he's missed an open goal. Look how bad he is and all of that. But Firmino couldn't really do much, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, and then towards the end, Pookie gets in behind. Brilliant save from Alisson. He was straight at him, but does well. And um, yeah, and then we managed to hang on and uh, make it 1-0, which puts us again 25 points clear, 17 wins in a row. What is it now? 25 wins this season and one draw? It's mad. Uh, it's, it's mad. This team doesn't seem like it knows when it's beaten. And even now, when there's actually a huge leeway to actually drop points, they're still getting the wins. They're still racking up these three points like like, like it's making a sandwich. It's easy for them. It's just it's easy. Um, but let me get into the player ratings now. Alison Becker, I'm going to give you... I'm going to say... I'm going to say a 9 out of 10 performance. I could give him a 10 out of 10. You know what? Screw it. 10 out of 10 performance for me. Alison Becker made some very good saves. Distribution was beautiful as always. And that save there, he has got the strongest palm in world football. I don't care what anyone says. Stronger than Luis Suarez in 2010, Euro, uh, in the World Cup of 2010. He's got the strongest palms of all time. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for Alison Becker. We love to see it. Um, Andy Robertson... I thought when Sadio Mane came on, he was much better. Uh, I thought the first half, he wasn't really providing that much in attack. Um, even though there was a... I forgot there was a good chance that in the second half anyway, where the ball gets fizzed in, but sadly nobody was actually be able to get onto it. But I thought as soon as Sadio Mane came on, um, came on the link-up player was so much better and he was actually able to do more on the ball. Um, so I'm going to say an 8 out of 10 performance. I thought defensively he was good, in attack he was good. Um... With Trent, it was a bit of a weird one for me. I thought in the first half it was a bit sloppy at times. I thought he gave the ball away. His corners weren't as good. His crossing wasn't as good. I don't know if that's the wind. But in the second half, again, just like the majority of the team, I thought that he played much better. So again, 8 out of 10, almost created a goal for a Roberto Firmino. And uh, yeah, I thought he played very well. I thought he played quite well, especially in that second half. Uh, Joe Gomez and Virgil van Dijk, for me, 9 out of 10 performances. These guys, again, another clean sheet for them. You know, that spine is looking strong. They don't need no chiropractics out here. It was brilliant. It was brilliant stuff. I mean, they, you know, cleared the ball. They were calm on the ball. They were defending. They, they harried it out. They were, you know, from corners. They'll clear the ball out. It was just a very, very commanding performance from the defence. And I'm putting out there, it's one of the best centre-back partnerships that we've seen in the Premier League for a very, very long time. I mean, I don't care what anyone says. For me, that is Liverpool's best defensive partnership. And the stats prove it for yourselves. I mean, you look at the goals that Liverpool can see when them two are in defence. It is next to nothing, you know. And... The, that defence has been absolutely amazing. I mean, it's levels of John Terry, uh, Carvalho levels. And I'm just happy they're here. <laughs> um, Jordan Henderson. I thought first half he didn't play well. I thought the midfield in general didn't play well in that first half. Um, yeah, I thought second half it was obviously a bit better, just like the majority of the team. But first half I didn't think he played too well. But then he obviously does well to get the assist. As I said, that first half he could have, we could have, you know, gone, you know, gone one 0 down if it wasn't for, you know, for some of his passes. But again, same with Trent as well. But in the second half it was much better. So again, I'm gonna say an eight out of ten. But as I said, he he wasn't really, um, you know, it was a bit sloppy at times. I don't know if that's the wind or whatever, but it was sloppy at times. Then I'm um, gonna go Genie Van Alden. For me, he was our worst performer. There was a a good time when you know Firmino plays a brilliant ball and he almost gets in behind. But that was really the highlight of his game. If I'm being completely honest with you, he didn't really do much. I didn't see much of him. He for me, he seemed like he ghosted. So because he ghosted, I'm gonna give him a six out of ten. I didn't really see that much of him. Naby Keir. I thought defensively today was much better. I thought defensively. Today, he was actually quite good. 
Um, offensively, at times he did give the ball away a few times. His weight of pass was a bit on. An, it wasn't on. It wasn't on it today. But overall, I thought he played quite well. Um, obviously, should have scored. Had two chances. I'd say the shot from outside the box went straight to the goalkeeper, and then that rebound um, on Mohamed Salah, um, which he should have scored. To be fair, but again, I thought it was a good performance. So I'm going to say again, eight out of ten. And I would actually like to see him against um, Atletico Madrid. Whether he's got the legs for it because obviously his injury record is a bit bad at the moment but if he if he's fit and if he can I'd actually like to see him against um, you know midfield of Fabinho Henderson and Gini Van Adam. I would like that very much not Gini Van Adam, Naby Keita um, and then the front three I thought Salah I don't know about this one because there were so many times where he could have given the ball and he, you know he hadn't created a lot of chances and he was Creating good link up play between Genie Van Alden, you know, Oxley Chamberlain on that right hand side. He was actually creating sometimes very good link up play, and then sometimes he'd do stupid things and overthink things. And that's my problem with Mohamed Salah um, sometimes. But again, I didn't think he played badly. I didn't think he played badly, but I do think he. it's not the level that we have seen from Mohamed Salah in the past few weeks. Um, so I'm going to say 7.5 out of 10. I, I, I don't think he played very, very well, but I don't think he played very badly at the same time. Oxley Chamberlain. I don't like him as a winger. I, as I've said it so many times, I don't like him as a winger. I prefer him as a central role. Obviously, we've got a lot of depth there, and then one place we don't have depth is on the left-hand side. Um, so, I, I feel sorry for him, but at the same time, I don't think... I don't really want to see him that much on the left wing. Uh, hopefully, we can get a replacement left winger in the summer so that Ox can actually play in that central role instead of, you know, playing in... Um, you know, playing out wide because I do not want to see that. <laughs> so I'm going to say 7 out of 10 for that um, for Oxley Chamberlain. Roberto Firmino for me was our best attacker. Obviously, Bart, the next person I'm going to say. Um, but who started today, uh, he was a very Brazilian like, you know, Burkamp esque. He was just very good. You know, he had a very unlucky not to get a goal in that first half where he takes the ball down brilliantly, or wait, waiting for the ball to come in the volley, and then sadly, he gets blocked, um, he gets cleared out, sorry, and he was just very good, you know, he was making slick passes, he was pressing well, and by the way, Naby Keo, exactly, another thing, as I said, about his defensive performance, his pressing as well was amazing today, um, Teddy was harried so many times, but anyway, back on to Mr. Bobby Dazzler, see, senor, he was amazing, he, you know, yeah, even in second half, you know, he wasn't as shiny in the second half but he still was very good you know he was pressing he was you know creating chances he almost scored for himself i thought it was he played quite well today so i'm gonna say and i'm gonna screw it again nine out of ten for roberto Firmino. then we're gonna go into the subs bench fabinho thought he played well for the time he came on he broke up the play you know did what fabinho does he does he you know he does it all the time it's basically like it's it's now just it's just fabinho he's 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 just cold as hell. And, yeah, it, it, I'm going to say a solid 8.5 out of 10 for Fabinho. You know, stopped so many counter-attacks when he came on. And Sadio Mane, 10 out of 10. Just for coming up clutch. Improving the team overall when he came on. The, uh, you just Everybody played better when Sadio Mane came on. And just for that, just the shit impact that he came with when he came on was just amazing. So for me, 10 out of 10 performance. The goal was taken brilliantly. He created chances. He was, he seemed like he was, he, he was always a danger for the opposition. Even times when he punted the ball, I was like, oi, I was on my, I was on my, you know, edge of my seat whenever I saw Sadio Mane on the ball and, you know, brilliant performance for me from Sadio Mane. And then Milner, I mean, he did well to actually stop one of their counter-attacks and, you know, break up the play, calm things down. Does what James Milner does. So again, I'm going to say 7.5 out of 10. Wasn't a big cameo, but a good cameo nevertheless. And yeah, Liverpool now, as I said, 25 points. Five more wins, I believe. Five more wins. And that's if City don't drop any points. Five more wins and the league is nicely wrapped up. This show, actually, last time Liverpool won the league. So hopefully, this is going to happen again. Let's be honest here. But let's see. Will we hopefully... FA Cup now, Champions League. I'm hope one in all of them right now. I'm being greedy now. I'm being very greedy. And l luckily today, we keep our unbeaten run. We're obviously going to win the league, but can we go invincible? That is the main 
question. We're going to be break the 100 points barrier, but are we going to go invincible? That is the question. It is the end of the video. If you guys could smash that like button, that would be much appreciated. Also, leave a comment about your opinions on the game or anything like that. And sit down in the comment section below and also subscribe if you guys are new to the channel we are so close to 500 subscribers and if you guys don't know i'll be doing a charity live stream when i reach 500 subscribers so that'll be much appreciated it is the end of the video it's your boy urge your wife it liverpool are 25 points clear we're getting a tiny bit closer to confirming that premier league title it's the end of the video and i hope you guys have a very nice day see ya Thank you.